the choir just sang all things are possible all things are possible is i was kept awake the whole of last night thinking primarily about one particular world and i know that may be the situation of somebody in this place jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20 he said the harvest has passed the summer is ended and we are not saved the harvest is passed the summer is ended and we are not safe perhaps you are here seated under the sound of my voice and you are thinking certain things you wanted to happen in january or at least in the first quarter they didn't happen you wanted them to happen in the second quarter they didn't happen you wanted them to happen in the third quarter they didn't happen i have good news for you that thing will still happen in this quarter most times one of the things that the devil does is that he shows us the things that have not happened in our lives the things that we believe god to happen that has not happened in order for us to get depressed but i want you to know that even though that thing that you are trusting god to happen in the first and second quarter that didn't happen as at this third quarter even if they didn't happen you still need to give God all the glory. You know why? Most times we thank God for the things that God, that happened. Maybe you have an accident, just like the testimony we have had. We have an accident. God delivered you. You are thanking him for the things that happened. I'd like you to know that the things that didn't happen, that almost happened, but God did not allow to happen. They are more than the things that you think actually happen. Praise God. Jesus was telling Peter, he said, Peter, for your information, Satan came to sift you like wheat. Luke chapter 15. He said, I know you are not aware, but I'd like you to know there was an attempt against your life by the past of darkness. You didn't know. Because Jesus was, was telling Peter what happened before then. Which Peter was not aware. He said, Satan actually came to save you like wheat. There was a satanic attempt on your life to truncate your destiny. But he said, even when you are not aware, I intervened on your behalf and I have took care of the situation. So, most times, the things that the devil planned to happen in our lives that God did not allow to happen, they almost happened, but they didn't happen. They are more than the things that you think actually happen. We had the story of the prodigal son. The Bible says, after he has spent all his substance, you know, most times we think that the prodigal son ate with his wine. There was no scriptural proof that the prodigal son ate with his wine. He didn't eat with his wine. In verse 6 of that chapter, you look chapter 15, the Bible says, and he fain ate with his wine. F-A-I-N. F-A-I-N, that word, translated from the Greek word, actually means almost. Say with me, almost. Again. Again. Meaning that the prodigal son came to a level that he almost ate with his wine, but he didn't eat with his wine. The same way, there are certain deaths that almost happened in your domain but they didn't happen there were certain embarrassment that almost happened in your way but they didn't happen there were certain miscarriage that you were supposed to have in the course of that pregnancy but it didn't happen so for the things that the enemy planned to happen in our life that almost happened but it didn't happen 
place in one minute, give God thanks. Consciously. 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 You traveled and came back. You almost had accident, but you didn't have accident. You were sick. You, near, you almost died, but you didn't die. You have financial challenge. The landlord almost threw your things out, but he didn't throw your things out. The things that almost happened, they are far greater than the things you thought actually happened. Glory be to the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have turned. So we are looking at a word this morning in our teaching series, and I'm privileged to take the part 1A of that teaching, unveiling the wonders in the world unveiling the wonders in the world and our prophetic focus for this month as it has been read to us is god still work wonders the world still god's word still work wonders it has been working wonders it is still working wonders and it will still work wonders somebody was arguing I don't believe in anointing oil. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in this. That you believe it or not is irrelevant. The truth is that it is working. Now, just tell me it is not working in your hands. Then I will agree. But that you say it is not working, it is an error. It has worked. It is still working. And it will still work. Praise the Lord. So the word of God has capacity to set free the captive. Note that the word of God has what it takes to set free the captive. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 32, it said you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know and you walk in the light of that truth, it said it shall set you free. Please, I'd like you to know that freedom is not free. In fact, there is nothing free in this world. There is a place called Freetown. In that Freetown, they see you still need money to buy something. Yet they call it Freetown. There is nothing free in this world, including salvation. Do you know that salvation is not free? Somebody paid for it with his blood, in fact, with his life. So actually, there is nothing called free in this world. Nothing called free. And freedom also is not free. Sometimes you hear that they are doing medical outreaches and they say they are giving the drug out for free. I said, no. They are not giving out. No, they say, what is the cost? They say, no, you don't have to do anything. It's free. Yes, it is free. But people put their money together to sponsor that outreach. So there is nothing free in this world. So freedom is not free. I was privileged ministering last Sunday and I told them, I said, any freedom that appears to be free is not freedom. Any freedom that appears to be free is not freedom. It is freedom. Because there is a price attached to freedom and the price attached to freedom is called knowledge. Knowledge of the word of God. Now, every time the Bible wants to explain the sexual intercourse between a man and a woman, the Bible in most cases use two kinds of words. Listen carefully. Depending on the, legal, the legality of the relationship between the man and the woman in, in, in question, Every time a man has intercourse, have intercourse with a woman and they are not legally married, maybe it is out of, there is no consent or it's a rape or whatever. The Bible will always say, in most cases, it will say, and the man slept with a woman. Slept, slept, slept. Now, but when the Bible wants to refer to a situation where the sexual intercourse is, as it is, is between people who are legally married. The Bible will always use the word new 
and Adam knew his wife and Abraham knew his wife now both of them signify sexual intercourse but the terms being chosen depends on the legality of the relationship so when the Bible says and you shall know the truth what the Bible actually means is that you shall have intercourse with the truth and the product of that intercourse will give you freedom so freedom is not free there is a price that is attached to freedom and the price attached to freedom is called knowledge knowledge of the world knowledge of the world so the word of God set free the captive John chapter 1 verse 1 to 5 every time the word of God comes captives are set free now in those times when we didn't have good knowledge of the word of the Lord when we are casting out devils we struggle to cast out devils and some of them will give us headache in casting them out I remember there was a day a man ran into our prayer meeting and to cast out the devils was very terrible in fact the amulet and the charm with the man refused to burn we tried to burn it the man later has told us that what it cost him to prepare that amulet is two twins that is a, two, a set of twins and the tongue of an Hebrew so casting out devils without using the word is a great frustration deliverance minister we understand what I'm talking about it is the word of God that set free every time the word of God comes alive in any relationship in any issue chains are broken you know why Psalm 82 he said, ye are gods unto whom the word came. So every time the word comes to you in any area, you become a god in that area. Every time the word of holiness comes to you, you become a god over sin. Now, when the word of God on prosperity comes on you, you must be struggling with sin. But it is when the word of holiness enters you, you have freedom from sin. The same way, the word of holiness can come to you and you become a god over sin, but yet you are still struggling in poverty. You know why? The word of prosperity has not entered you. So every time you have a challenge in any area, locate relevant word in that area that will make you a god over the circumstances praise the lord because the word of the lord set free say with me set free so if you understand this truth patronizing professional prophets will be a thing of the past because when the word of god enters you it makes you a god in any area ye are gods unto whom the word came the word of the Lord provokes supernatural breakthrough. God cannot, God, you cannot have God's word and you'll be struggling. Peter was struggling all through the night. But the word of the Lord came and settled the situation. I have that experience sometime. While I was in the last semester, I was privileged to be one of these nine first CU executive. Many. And I discovered that probably because we're not using wisdom most of the escorts will always come back to the school for extra semester and I check all our ESCO. most of them most of them their results were not something worthy to write to me about personally I was worried because in secondary school and in primary school I was one of the best students so which results which should not go and meet my father with I was embarrassed so in one of the last semester I went I went to a certain place and I was asking the Lord, Father, I cannot come to this school and not have this grade out of this school. And sh the word of the Lord came very powerful, I will not forget. He said, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. In the evening, I met with my assistant. They are doing well now. She's married, have their own ministry now. 
I said, I just had a word from the Lord in the morning. I am leaving this school with so and so great. She shook her head. When the results were out, I refused to go and check it. I only went to the school to collect my call up letter. And I was approaching the call up letter. My colleagues started hailing me. They say, Ah, you declare, you clear. They didn't know when I settled it. Some time ago, I was where to get married. The marriage was just few days to the, to the, the was just few days away, and there was nothing on ground that would have made that marriage successful. Where we come from, we don't beg, we don't borrow, we only buy. But you need money to buy. So I was worried. I went to God one time and I was praying. I had that word very clear. Son, you will not only have enough for your wedding. You will have plenty left over after the wedding. Ah, when my fiancé, who is not my wife today, came in the evening. I said, I was with the Lord this morning. And this is what the Lord told me. That we will not just have enough for the wedding. We have plenty left over after the wedding. To tell you how bad it was, we couldn't afford a good ring. My wife traveled all the way to USA to buy a ring. United States of Abba. <laughs> she bought the ring with 150 naira. Now, when people saw the ring, they were angry that this ring, they cheated you. It's not supposed to be up to 150 naira. That tells you how bad it was. But few days before the wedding, the heavens opened up. Money started coming from left, right, center. Some two or three days to the wedding because we now had enough money. We that bought a ring of 150, even though we were cheated, we bought a ring of 30,000 then. You know why? The word of the Lord came to me. You shall not only have enough for the wedding, you will have plenty left over after the wedding. Whatever he says to one, he says to all. Standing on the shoes of God's servant, I prophesy. Concerning any project at hand, you will not only have enough for the project, you will have plenty left over. Shout hallelujah. So, the word of the Lord, when you encounter it, it brings supernatural turnaround. Say, I hear. I hear. The word of the Lord guides in the journey of life. I saw something ago that made me value the word of the Lord so much. In Mark chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus told them, He said, Look, okay, no, they came to ask Jesus. They said, where should we go? Where is the place that has been prepared? The, the feast you are talking about, where are we going to have it? You have not given all the direction. How do we know the place? Jesus told them, say, don't worry. Just go out. And as you go out, you will see a man carrying a pitcher of water. That is to say, carrying like a pot of water. And he said, anywhere the man goes, follow him. Now, every time you hear water in scriptures, it means the world. Meaning that as you go out, locate a world. It is not the man that you are following. It is the water on his head that is following. As you keep following the man who is carrying the water, it will lead you to the place that is already prepared. Meaning, the world is a lamp onto your feet and the light onto my path. There are two different things. We have the word for the immediate and the word for the later. When they say fit, it means immediate. But when they say part, it means later. Meaning that following the word of the Lord, you can't miss it in the present. You can't miss it in the future. Now, people have always come to, come to ask me, one day somebody came to meet me, he said, sir, he was to do wedding, and after the diagnosis, medical report, he suggests that the wife has a disease which ordinarily they should put up the wedding. She came, he came to ask me, he said, sir, 
forget about the fact. Let's forget that you are a pastor. What will you advise if I am your brother? Please advise me genuinely. Should I stop this wedding or should I cancel it? I told him. I told him. I said, I understand what you mean. But please, one of your fear of marrying her is because you don't want to be a widower shortly after you get married. He said, yes. I said, but do you know that marrying a lady that has sickness is not only the way, the, the way you can become a widower. You can marry a healthy lady. And as he's traveling one week after the wedding, he have an accident and die. True or false? I said, now, this is what I will advise you. Go to God in prayers. God, what are you saying concerning this matter? Receive a word from the Lord. What are you saying concerning this matter? I said, if you receive a word from God, trade with that word. You will make it. He went, as I advised, and he came back and he said, I have a leading to go ahead with the marriage. I said, fine. I tell you the truth. They are married now, doing very well. Have to have they have children now. No issue, no concern. You know why? The Bible says, Luke chapter 1, verse 45. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her. Now listen. He didn't say those things that were told them. He said those things that were told her. I tell people, the last Saturday of Shiloh, Papa will always declare the word for the year. I don't wait for that day because I know that the one Papa will declare is a general word. But I always go to ask for my own specific word. Blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things that were told her, not that were told them. So, and most times, whatever God tells me in prayers has always come to pass. December 27, 2007, I was in one of those prayers. God said, Son, it's time for you to come up either. Few weeks into the year, they said they are doing ordination. They said they are putting my name. They are doing my name. It was later, and I remembered what God told me before. I don't know the word that must have been told to you by God. That word will not fail. I said that word will not fail. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. So, what is it in the word? The word carries power. Say with me, power. power. Now, hear this. Blessings and cursing, they are packaged in words. Now, words are very important. Words are very powerful. Don't play with words. Don't play with words. Because blessings and cursing, they are packaged in words. Because words carry power, both negative power and positive power. I'm talking about words even of mortal men. Many people are where they are today because of what they have used their mouth to say. Your words carry power. Whether you said it in joke or you said it in reality, be very careful with words that come out from your mouth. One day, a young lady called me. I know her to be pregnant. So when she called me, I, said, I just speak. I say, ah, say you won't tell me, say you don't burn. He said, no, sir, I'm not even due yet. I called you for nothing, I'm not due. I said, oh, I said, I thought you wanted to call me. I think she was seven months then, or eight months. I said, I thought you wanted to call me that you, want, you have given birth. He said, no, pastor. He said, but pastor, true, true, as you talk and say, me say, I don't tire for this pregnancy. I want born. I said, you want born? He said, yes. I said, okay, go born. Praise the Lord. I said, go born. That same day, she had labor and gave birth that same day. You know why? We were joking. I just said, go born. And she went to born. I was not on the altar. I didn't have any backing of any father. Today, I am on the altar. I have the backings of my father. Go and marry. Go and build your house. Go and buy the car. Go and prosper. You know why? 
when words are spoken, power to perform follows it. When a word is spoken, power to perform, but whether negative or positive. I've once shared a testimony here. One of my friends were together last weekend. She wanted to get married. I was older than her. So the fiancé came around us, around here. I was telling the fiancé, jokingly, I said, ah, that your wedding go tough, eh? That me go be your driver. She laughed. He said, I beg, no put me for trouble. You know if you drive me on my wedding day. I was joking. There was no way I could be a driver. In fact, I was so there for, I've been engaged to be the MC in that wedding. So there was no way I could drive this lady on her wedding day. I was joking. Now, when the wedding was approaching, I wanted to oppress them in the village that today they will know that a protected boy has come. I went to the market, bought a resource control uh, cab, bought walking stick, had a very powerful suit then. I prepared it for the wedding. As I got to the, to the place in the morning, I was with my friend. The man that they hired the car from sent a message. He said, your car has been decorated, but the driver to drive it has disappointed us. <laughs> he said, can you send someone to come and drive the car? In the room where we were, I was the only one that could drive. Say with me, words are powerful. Because words carry power. So they say, okay, I went to pick the car already decorated. I came to the place, picked my friend and the best man, dropped them in the venue. They said, okay, I should go and pick the, fam- the wife. I went there, the wife was not ready. The flower guests were ready. I picked the flower guests. I came back. I picked the wife and the chief bridesmaid to the venue. The parents have not arrived. They said, I should go and pick the parents of the wife. I went there, picked the parents of the wife. Now, can you understand, can you imagine a wedding that only one car is available to pick everybody? My mouth made it so. I said, the clutch was worrying. In fact, I bought the clutch of that car that day. The clutch was worrying, was disturbing me. I was struggling with the car. The parents of the bride, they were insulting me on the steering. Which car driver they give us today? I say, I don't blame you. It's my mouth that I blame. You know why? I wanted to go there to oppress them as a protected boy. But my mouth made me a daffo driver. Words are powerful. We were in a meeting one day in the fellowship. It was the last semester. And the person leading said, please tell your neighbor, I will see you again in Adoikiti. I will see you again. We just told our neighbors, we will see you again. When we finished the semester, one sister felt so sick in her testimony. She said her body left her. She saw her spirit man going to eternity beyond. She shouted, no. I promised someone in Adoikiti, I'm going to see him again. Immediately he said that, the spirit, a spirit man reversed and entered a body. I'd like you to help me prophesy to your neighbor. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say good things to him, they must happen. They must happen. Because words are carriers of power. In Jesus' name. Now, if the, if the words of a mortal man can carry power, how much more the word of God? Where the word of a king is, there is power. So, don't allow the devil to tell you what you are not. Tell him what God said you are. One day when in the, in the fellowship, let me I'll round up with this. We're having training in our office, and all the Nollywood actors were present. They were shooting film in our office complex. 
So while we, after we finished our own, my colleagues said they started snap, said they should, should be, started snapping with the Nollywood. In fact, they, they picked Ransom Noah. They were, were snapping with Ransom Noah, turn by turn. So when it got to my turn, I was going. Something told me, ah, oh boy, your mumu strong. So snapping with Ramsey Noah now is not it's now an achievement. Now I don't have anything about against Master Noah. I love him. Professionalism, his excellence. But the truth is this: there is nothing in Ramsey Noah that I will envy. He's a star. I am a star. He's a Hollywood star. I am a Hollywood star. Yes. He's a TV star. I am a TV star. Look at me on television now. I'm a TV star. Good. So, when God said in First Peter or Second Peter, you are a peculiar people, he meant it. You are a holy nation, he meant it. You are a chosen treasure, he meant it. Stop believing what the devil says you are. Believe what God says you are. And you walk out of your defeat. Stand to your feet. If you are not born again, all these things we are saying, they will be like Quran to you. They will be like Arabic to you. All eyes closed, all ears bow, all heads bow. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ because we were born again before. Or you were not born again before. You want to be born again this morning because you are going home with a miracle this morning. Please put your right hand up, your left hand on your chest and please come straight towards this altar. God's servant is coming to lead you to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. <laughs> You can clap better, make it better, and make a joyful noise for that wonderful word. Lift up your hands and give God thanks, give Him praise, give Him honor, celebrate Him, magnify His name, glorify His name. Jesus, we give you glory. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have given thanks. If you are not truly born again, please, whenever you are in the gallery, come quickly. God is waiting for you. He's waiting for you. Until you are born again, the word of God will never profit you. You can never command the power in the world. Come quickly. Come quickly. God is waiting for you. And also, if today is your first time fellowshipping with us on a Sunday like this, also please come. We want to acknowledge your presence. We love you. Wherever you are, please come quickly. Today is your first time ever fellowshipping with us on a Sunday like this. Come. Please put your hands together for Jesus as they come. Clap better. The better. You clap the faster they come. Come. Please clap better for Jesus. He is still coming. Today is your first time ever on a Sunday like this. Come quickly. And in case you are born again before and for so re some reasons, 